Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Views on the Continent. It's the Wednesday edition on your Pan African television. In Chad, persistent protest actions in the country for the past two weeks have led to the loss of over 50 lives as civilians stormed the streets of the capital city, Jamena, calling for an end to military rule. The country of late President Idris Deby Ikno has been thrown into turmoil since his assassination in 2021 during fighting with the Front for Change and Concord of Rebel Group. Idris Deby Ikno ruled the country for 30 years after coming to power in a coup in 1990. He cracked down on the opposition and human rights during his tenure, with the Chadian economy also languishing under his rule. His 38-year-old Muhammad Idris Deby took power in April 2021 and originally vowed a restoration of civilian rule in 18 months. However, earlier this month, he reneged on his promise delaying elections to October 2024 and becoming the country's uh, transitional president. He equally uh, carried out uh, the new he carried out a new government where he created a new ministry he created a new national unity government uh, with rebels making up the members of government an action which was not well welcomed by the people of Chad and which is still leaving the country in turmoil the fate of uh, this uh, country, Central African nation, is uh, in the next days ahead and the next years ahead, is what is looked at as uh, the international community has also looked into the matter and is calling for a ceasefire as uh, soldiers are equally shooting on these civilians who are protesting against our military rule. Trying to analyze uh, the vacuum left by late President Idris Deby, the role played by former president in uh, the Central African uh, community, and uh, what the fate of the country as at now with his son in command is what we shall be looking at in today's edition of Views on the Continent. Stay with us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to know you're trusting your Pan African television. It is uh, past 3 p.m. local time, and uh, this is views on the continent over to Chad. For the past two weeks, the country has been thrown into turmoil with several protest actions. Protest actions by the civilians who are calling for an end to military rule in a country which has been ruled for the past 18 months by a transitional government which is headed by the son of former president Idris Deby Itno, Muhammad Idris Deby, after promising 18 months ago to carry out a transitional, a democratic election after 18 months of transitional rule, has gone against his promise and now created a new government, a new government which he calls a unity national government, and it is made up of various uh, rebel actors or rebel factors in uh, this uh, new government the international community and the citizens of Chad are not in accord with this decision and that is why the country has been in turmoil for the past two weeks as protest actions demolition of uh, uh, infrastructure have been going on and lost of lives equally the state of Chad as at now and in the days ahead is what we shall be analyzing in the country of one of the former African leaders who used to be very uh, recognized and acknowledged for his efforts in the fight against uh, terrorism and rebel in uh, the Central African community. So we look at this uh, today with our guests in the studio in this one our interactive program. We shall welcome your opinion, your contributions on uh, our Facebook page. Uh, however, we have in the studio Mr. Song Derek. He is a civil society actor and a political analyst. Thanks for honoring this invitation. Thank you very much, uh, Rita. It's always a pleasure to be on the Pan-African television, Af African media. 
and of course to share our views especially as a civil society where we believe that uh, we play the role of uh, monitoring of policing and giving our own opinion as it counts uh, especially on happenings that are going on across Africa and particularly in Chad today where we'll be talking about uh, the power vacuum and power mongering fight that is going on in Chad and of course to the million viewers of Africa Media it's always a pleasure to be on platform to talk issues like this and of course it's a pleasure to know you're glued to your set in order to listen to what we have to say concerning the topic of the day Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Song Derek, for being with us this afternoon. Of course, you shall be enlightening our audience with uh, analysis on <coughs> the state of affairs in Chad. So, in the course of this program, before getting into detailed analysis with our guests, I'd like us to take a, a, a report which shows us the state of things presently in Chad and how it has been, especially in the past uh, two weeks. So, let's take this report. In Chad, banned demonstrations turned into a bloodbath. On Thursday, security forces opened fire on demonstrators in the country's two largest cities, killing at least 60 people and wounding hundreds. The protesters demanded the ouster of Muhammad Idris Debi Itno, who took over in the wake of his father's assassination 18 months ago. 38-year-old general formed what he called Unity Government following his appointment as head of the transition after National Forum. Still on Thursday, Debi presided over his first cabinet meeting. The Prime Minister announced a nighttime curfew until the total restoration of order. The African Union and the UN were among the voices condemning the lethal use of force on civilians. We call on the authorities to ensure that the security, safety and human rights of all Chadians, including the right of freedom of expression, peaceful assembly and association, are respected. We also call on all parties to refrain from violence or excessive use of force and to remain committed to the spirit of dialogue in the interest of peace and stability in the country. According to witnesses' testimonies, demonstrators began to blow whistles at 3 a.m. all over the capital. Police fired tear gas at the crowds, which continued advancing, and their numbers grew. It was then that security forces opened fire. The deaths mainly occurred in Jamena and the cities of Mundo and Qumra, the Chadian PM said. The government spokesperson accused the protesters of attacking governmental headquarters. We want justice, this protester says. Macron, take heed, listen to the voice of the people. Today, if we are doing this, it's because of you, France. Over 300 people were wounded, and witnesses say some arrived at the hospital bearing signs of torture. On this footage, an ambulance is being fed at as medics try to tend to victims. The exact death toll remains unknown. Victims include journalist Nasi Soreje, who was struck by a bullet. Thank you very much, Director, for the report. Getting back into the studio, we have uh, a guest, Mr. Song Derek. He's a member of the civil, uh, civil society in Cameroon, and he'll be enlightening us equally on what's happening in uh, Chad this day and this period. As a member of a civil society, Mr. Song Derek, we see very well that the opposition parties and the uh, civil societies are the main people who call, called and orchestrated for these protest actions demanding for a quicker return to uh, uh, democracy and uh, this led to various deadly demonstrations so how as a civil society actor of your own country how do you see this uh, action by the people of chad yeah thank you very much Rita. Uh, talking about civil society uh, thanks for the opportunity i would say that i'm a member of the civil society um naya new era youths for africa where we believe that um it is very important for Africans to have a paradigm shift, to have a mindset shift. We believe that we can build Africa by ourselves. We can get knowledge and the youth uh, uh, who have been sleeping for so long, it's high time they, they got up from their sleep and begin asking questions and begin uh, participating in activities. And of course, as a new era youth for Africa, we believe that um, it's headquartered in Cameroon mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, renowned members in the likes of uh, Dr. Michael Dimancho, yeah. who is a coordinator and um, 
Ndiwum Emmanuel, who is a Secretary General, and other members. And um, we have patrons like uh, Lumbi Milambo of Zimbabwe. And uh, South Africa, we have representatives there. And we just believe that it's high time that the youth started thinking differently. We need to shift our thinking from what used to be that politics was about old age people and, of course, to start questioning the decisions. And um, talking about what is happening in Chad, it's, it's, it's very disheartening to, to see people dying. Mm -hmm. Just one day we have uh, over 50 cops uh, or to 60 persons who are killed. And this killing is as a result of the fact that people come to the to power by the back door and they are struggling all their possibilities to 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 um, keep the power to themselves. You know, um, Idris Deby he died. He died a hero, I must say. He yeah. died at the war front trying to to fight uh, against the um, rebel the reb yes the rebel insurgency. Uh, but the fact that we realize that after his death, it's more like a succession, it's more like a kingdom where his uh, son is beginning to take over or has taken over power. And when they took over power, it was really a promise which we all celebrated. I remember I was on TV after that for a, for a program in a sister TV station where they talked about they promised a return to, to civilian rule. I think we have never celebrated any military rules. Most military rules are very, very dangerous because the moment you come to power through the back door, the moment you come to power through a military coup, mm -hmm. the moment you come to power by a rape of constitution, you realize that instead of you spending enough time to, 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 to build a nation, to advance a nation, to advance the economy, you are spending more time trying to bring people closer to you who protect you on par. So I think this is just one of the things that are, uh, is happening in, um, in Chad. And as a civil society uh, uh, movement, I will uh, call on uh, the Chadian youth. It's your right to stand for, for, for justice. It's your right to stand for a return to civilian uh, rule. But it is very delicate at this moment, given that the barrel of the gun is in the hand of a gunman. The military man is a gunman, and he can shoot as long as he wants to. You know, the, 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 there is a common saying that uh, uh, power is good, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's very dangerous for yeah, them. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tom, for your first <laughs> take. Now, you talk of uh, uh, power being good, absolute power being good, but corrupting absolutely. Of course, that seems to be what's affecting the people of Chad presently. We remember during the takeover by uh, pre late President Idris Deby's son, Muhammad Idris Deby, the people of Chad were, were happy because they knew that the, the, the leadership which President Bibi uh, was carrying on was going to be was going to continue. Anyway, some were happy and others felt like it was a monarchical rule that was going to continue. However, the, 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 there was this uh, faith in a young leadership. But now it tends to be like uh, when we complain uh, of something and we get to be in that position, we also get to be power hungry and very uh, power thirsty and, and, and having a very high and huge appetite. And that seems to now be the greatest fear of the people of Chad. As the civilians and the youths themselves, we can see many of them who are on the streets are almost age mates with the president, the, the president in power. So we see them very, uh, 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 in, uh, in very energetic in their protest actions and against the decision of a young man who came as a savior some point in time some 18 months ago and now who wants to become a dictator yes of course um, i will tell you something you remember when the president of a country is traveling out of the country uh there are a lot of people who clap for the president when he travels and when he's coming back uh, but mind you that when they are clapping some of them who are clapping it angers others mm -hmm. so there is never a president in the world who will get the support of everybody mm -hmm. it's normal that chadians will not support all but um the promise of debbie i'm sure all of us welcome the promise of um, debbie uh junior debbie let yeah. me call him <laughs> that way junior debbie when he promised that uh, in no distant time he was going to make sure that power changes hand from the military junta 
back to the civilian role. But uh, it, it's been it's been 18 months. 18 months after he is trying to consolidate power, and then he's now pushing it to 2024. It, it it becomes questionable because pushing power to 2024 means he's creating enough time in order to consolidate power. He's creating enough time in order to look for the porosity. He's creating enough time in order to 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 find people who be loyal to him. He's creating enough time in order to 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 buy off because normally uh by the constitution of chad which mm -hmm. i'm not a, cons a custodian of the constitution but I've, I've, I've happened to 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 read through chad first of all had a prime minister to vice president and in the absence of the 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 the, the, the president mm -hmm. the vice president has to immediately take power until the, 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 the next elections but what is happening now it's different because we realize that the senate is becoming obsolete uh, the parliament is barely not functional this is because um you understand that uh, uh, um, <clears throat> debbie when he was in power he changed a lot of things uh, a lot of things in that there was a, a time period for for a presidential limit but he made the, 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 the period he, and he, he has been in power for almost 30 years 30, 30 years it, it's, it's such a long time to consolidate but I, I, I think that if I'm called to give an advice to, to Junior Debbie, you know, I, I often say that it is far more honorable to lose power protecting life than to gain power losing, losing life. life. Because the, the life of the people, the life of the citizens is a reason for your leadership. And if the people are not put at the center of it, then you might gain power to become the most powerful person, but you'll be leading trees you'll be leading uh, animals and maybe no, there will be no animals mm -hmm. and the situation of chad what we have in chad now chad seems to be going down day by day the, the, the nature of chad with with chad has been from one crisis to the other from you know chad generally is made of rebel groups yeah even opposition leaders are regarded as rebels, rebels. so it's all a rebel movement and the moment this tension is stretched, you realize that instead of building, instead of advancing the country, we'll be sinking the country deeper. And that should be no, no vision of any visionary leader. Visionary leaders should put the people at the center. At the center. That should be it. Okay. So let's uh, come back. Let's come back to the responsibility of the people, responsibility of the civil society. Like I earlier asked, I would like to know if the way the youth of Chad are going about it is the right way. Because we, 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 they are protesting for their rights. However, they are still the ones losing their lives. As a civil society actor, do you think the way that is the youth in Chad are going about uh, voicing uh, their, their, their request, their desires is the best for them and the country? Uh, the problem is the nature of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, African leaders have never understood peaceful protest. And because they have never understood peaceful protest, that is why you see the youth. The youth believe that they are the future of that country. Mm -hmm. But I think that burning down of places, burning down of uh, uh, whatever, will not help us because if you are burning a building, it, def it doesn't mean that if there is change in power, you don't need that building. And I understand the frustration of the youth mm -hmm. in Chad. It is because of the iron grip of leadership. Because normally, what should occur is that the people are above the leaders but unfortunately in the african context the leaders are above the people if we were in a normal society mm -hmm. which africa has made a normal we would realize that when you become a leader it is like a loan it's like the people have given you power on loan and that power they have given you on loan you are accountable to the people you have to give report to the people but if at one time you decide to seize the power, you decide to take the power and then consolidate it and then become 
the author, the finisher, the alpha, and the omega. It is but normal for the people to rise up and ask for the right. It's their right. Because it is the people that choose leadership. It is not leadership that choose the people. So if the people have to choose leadership, and there is a particular leader and the people have refused that leadership, to be on the, on, on the best part of it is to have a, a dialogue. Although the Chadians are claiming, and the president, Gabe, Junior Deby, is claiming that there has been a certain national dialogue, which is quoted, uh, that has decided that elections have to be pushed to 2024, it is not true. It is not true. If that decision was taken, remember the, the protest that is going on is in Jamena, mm -hmm. which is the, 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 the capital city, city. Of, mm -hmm. of, of Chad. There is a problem. And leaders should listen to the problem of the people. It is not the problem to find out who is leading and then call the people to table and talk to them. Because the lives of Chadians, the lives of every citizen matters. And you trying to consolidate, because we remember when the Chadians uh, came to the street, we are told that the military officials opened fire. What is the role of the military? What's the role of the police? Yeah, normally it's supposed to protect the people. To protect the people. Mm. And the only time they have to fire is when they are protecting the people against a foreign invasion, a foreign attack. But unfortunately, then the military of African, most African country, they protect a person against the people, the people, which is very, very questionable. I think when we look at other countries that are normal, because most African countries practice abnormality. Mm -hmm. They don't do things in a normal way. Where a president can be impeached, a president can be taken to court, the, 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 the parliament can decide to say that the president will be sanctioned, the president will be taken out of office and it holds. This is different, quite different from the, the most of the system we have in Africa because a lot of persons who become leaders are power mongers. To become a leader, you must have a vision. Mm -hmm. You must have a plan of, of action. You have a vision, you have a mission. You have where you are taking your nation to. Two. Where are we today and where do we plan to be in 10 years' time? That should be the, the raison d'etre of becoming a leader. Becoming a leader. Mm -hmm. Like you have studied. You know, one famous uh, politician said that, uh, I went around my country and detected the problems of my people, detected what their problems were, and then we all decided and proposed solutions that were going to work for them. But on the eve of elections, my opponent came with bottles of drinks and they drank and forgot their problem. That is a problem with Africans. We always want to, 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 we believe in bottles of beers, we believe in bags of swords that will save us for a very short period of time and then we forget the solutions that will solve our problems that are going to last term. in a very lo long term. So, the youth, I understand, the youth of Chad, your lives matter. I, uh, from Cameroon, especially from the new era youths of Africa, our hearts go, or go out with those who have been killed, who have been shot by the bullets of those who have to protect them. But we think that you must be careful because when your life is lost, it's gone. You, we have to look for other means in order to change sit tight precedent. And the way Junior Debbie is coming, he might be going the father's way which is not very, very uh, uh, healthy for all of us. Okay, thank you very much. Now, talking about uh, a healthy way through which Muhammad Idris Debi seems, uh, an unhealthy way which Muhammad Idris Debi seems to be taking the country of Chad to, we see uh, the Prime Minister, appointed Prime Minister, uh, who says the mission of the new government is specific and it will consist in leading the country towards the first free and fair elections in its political history uh, mr song i need to we need to reiterate to the audience that this government they are talking about which aims at leading the country to a free and fair elections come 2024 is a government made up of rebel factors rebel members what yes. kind of hope does it give to the people yes i i, I will tell you that when when uh, 
uh, Idris Deby came to power. That was in 1991. Uh, after some times, he thought of uh, another election that was free and fair, like what they will be claiming. But <laughs> this, yes, if you, you read what happened in 1990, 1991, when he came to power, remember, mm -hmm. he he was a loyalist of Chad to the, to the sitting president mm -hmm. until he was accused of uh, plotting a coup where he finally escaped to France and later on came back, came back with his loyalists and then took over power. And years later, he organized an election where he, t he said that that election was free and fair. You and I know that the, in, in, in reality of the word free and fair, the election was a window dressing. It, it's not different. Like I said, it's a problem with African leaders. Like... Uh, um, African leaders, we're talking about countries, less charity begins at home, like Cameroon, like Nigeria, where you know that Nigeria is controlled by a certain unit where you, if you don't belong to, then power cannot change. Cameroon, we barely go to the pools to fulfill, fulfill uh, righteousness. So when we are talking about organizing the first free and fair elections, the question is, what happens to the rape of the constitution? Because the constitution is suffering from a rape. <laughs> There's a rape of the constitution mm -hmm. where we had expected the prime minister or the vice president to have been in position. But if the prime minister or the, the, the vice president is not in position, it's a constitutional rape. And who does the rape of a constitution is somebody who is power thirsty. Mm -hmm. I, I do not have any problems against uh, Debbie Junior, like I say, but I think that military leadership should be shown. People should shun military leadership, and the people should be given. If you are a military leader that feels like you have good ideas, yeah. there is always a moment or a, 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 an avenue to propose and push those those those, those things across, because when you take power as a military person i'm not condemning all military persons because the likes of uh, thomas sankara, sankara was, uh, exemplary. Uh, was very exemplary where they tried he tried so much to to fight against uh, the western imperialism but mm -hmm. Debbie's situation is not the case because the father was a worshiper of the west mm -hmm. his father worshiped the west and of course, he will normally continue from that. And better still, in a democratic country, uh, power is not hereditary. There should be some democratic process for power to change hands. And if the people have reason and they are asking questions, it is just but normal for, for, for him who has claimed, who has decided to be the leader of the people. I might be speaking maybe from uh, a myopic point of view, mm -hmm. but... From all indication, if the people are in the streets, you must ask questions what is happening. It's very important. If not, you may keep on losing life to gain power. And at the end of gaining power, you might not have lives to lead. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Song. From uh, that, it brings me now to want to understand, uh, Chad is just one of the countries which has suffered within the last uh, 18 months, which... 18 to 20 months it's just one of the countries which has suffered some uh, military transition or coup d'etat so it brings us now to want to know uh can 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 uh, uh turmoil hit nations only be successfully ruled by transitional governments or a coup d'etat the best way of solving <laughs> problems in nations yes in the in the world's continents uh, statistics, it's not even statistics, it's very visual mm -hmm. that has proven that Africa, every after a very short period of time, experienced a coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this coup d'etat is not because the people have a good plan. It's because those who have consolidated power, those who have power ownership, they have no plan to let go. And African leaders have a problem mm -hmm. preparing successors. And most successors, they always prepare 
are usually family member successors. Which raises a question of uh, 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 nepotism, tribalism, and all the likes. Mm -hmm. You know, when African leaders, whenever they would decide to understand that everybody has something to offer. If you read Desiderata, Desiderata tells you go placidly amidst the noise and listen to the ignorant, listen to the dull, they to have something to say. I think it should be a, 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 a map or a pace setter for African leaders to understand that everyone has something to offer. And if you go by the, 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 the law in physics that each time you, you, you stretch perhaps an elastic rubber or a string, it has an elastic limit. Mm -hmm. Leaders have an elastic limit. They have a position that when they go above it, it is limited. They can offer nothing, nothing more. more. The best they can do is to become counselors. But the leadership we have in Africa or in most African countries is the leadership of sit tight old squirrels. People who believe that they were born to lead, they will live leading and they will die leading. <laughs> and even when they have to die leading, it is their children who have to take leadership. And that is where the problem is. Uh, it, it, it's sad to, 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 to take the, 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 the example of United States of America, although we cannot compare the two because they are not yeah, a copycat. Mm -hmm. They are not a copycat. That it is stated that a president will rule for one term, it is renewable once. Mm -hmm. And after that, you step down. This is because I usually, uh, this is because everybody has something or time to offer. If after seven years, you have not offered what you have, after uh, 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 the next seven years, you cannot offer it, I think give another person time because you don't have all the time. Probably they have a high level of faith. faith. The, the longer it goes, they are, they, 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 they are faithful, they are, they are confident that with time they can do better. If the longer it goes, then uh, what happens? Uh, the, the, the president of Zimbabwe died on seat. Mm -hmm. He was a good man. We celebrated him for, for the fact that he was against the West, mm -hmm. the West hegemony and the fight. But the, 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 the question is, if you cannot lead people at the age of 40, perfectly mm -hmm. 40 to 47 47 to to to, to 50 54 mm -hmm. you cannot lead the people perfectly the question is this is it when you are 90 100 that you become a better leader <laughs> see there is something i believe in and it is one of the things that the new era youth for africa share that the youth in africa do not need the, the old people to quit the scene completely. Rather, the youth in Africa need the old people to stay aside and become guides. Sure. Because they have the force of experience, exactly. they have the knowledge, they have the intelligence, they know the do's and the don'ts of the game. They need to hold the hands of African youth that, okay, my son, please, you're now the president. If you do like this, it will be dangerous. Please, can you better do like this? Mm -hmm. Can you do like this? So that is what African youth need. It is not like African youth are telling the, the old age sick tight squirrel to die. They are, mm -hmm. The youth are not gods. And they cannot decide the death of someone. But we think that after ruling a country for 30 years, 30, 35 years, 40 years, it is time for you to tell people that, okay, I have served my people for some time mm -hmm. and it's time that I, I go for rest. Um, um, the president of the United States of America before uh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Uh, that was um, um, Obama, mm -hmm. in his speech, in his uh, uh, speech, when he was about to hand over, he said something that let me see how life tests after president. After president. Let me see how life is 
after presidency. But the problem with African leaders is they never want to see how life is after presidency. They only want that death should take them off. It can off. be very sad. Yes, it, it, it's very... No, it, and the it can reason be very why it sad, is sad for them is because of the rain yes, that they... The reason why power becomes sad for African presidents after presidency is because the rule, they lead with an iron hand. They don't lead, they rule with an iron fist. They believe they are the alpha, they are the omega. The belief they are the law because in a country there is nobody above the law the law is a book <laughs> and if you're against the law we throw the book at you and throwing the book at you we do not look whether you are the president or whosoever you are you throw the book if you open the book and realize you've done something against the law what the law the punishes law you <laughs> what <laughs> does the law say a sanction you are sanctioned but unfortunately, most African presidents are the law. Mm -hmm. And because they are the law, they tell you what should happen, what should not happen, what should be done, and what should not be done. And that is the reason why they consolidate a lot of power into their hands. And uh, sadly enough, those who are paying the price are the youths of today. Those who are paying the price is a fact that Africa is remaining underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. is the fact that the, the the immigration of African youth is increasing is the fact that Africa is losing a lot of its human resource is the fact that Africans resources are being exploited by those who are advanced is the fact that those who come to power are not loyal to the citizens they are loyal to the imperialists and the imperialists fool them to make their families rich and they exploit the riches of Africans and at the end, Africa has the, 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 the flour, Africa has the, 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 the coal, they have the oven, they have the, 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 the cake, mm -hmm. they bake the cake, yet bake for cake, which is very dangerous for, for all of us, I must say. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Song Derek. We keep uh, uh, looking at the state of uh, affairs in charge with the topic trying to analyze the state of the country after a vacuum is created by late president uh, Idris Deby Igno in 2021 the president fell on battlefield uh, in his country and now leadership is in the hands of his son the country is under great protest deadly protest where the gov the military is uh, using uh, uh, little guns or little methods of uh, of uh, suppressing the protesters and over 50 persons have uh, lost their lives so far the protest started on october 14th which was uh, the day that marked 18 months of uh, leadership transitional leadership uh, interim leadership we should say of the transitional government since taking over power from uh, uh, president Idris Deby Itno in April 2021 and uh, this government of uh, uh, led by the son of the former president Muhammad uh, is uh, has now decided to postpone again for another two years this uh, presidential election and that is why the people of Chad are in the streets the country is uh, very unstable and indeed is in great turmoil what can be the solution out of this many uh, some analysts have been questioning what what could what are the things that lead uh, most of uh, these persons or military uh, uh, persons to carry on coup d'etats to 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 change power through coup d'etats that now brings us to ask you mr Sonderi, just like some are asking most uh, a change in a country be done by coup d'etats others are asking uh, transitional to uh, 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 its transition to civilian rule the only solution to junta led nations equally. Um, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, that we have had good military leaders, JJ Rawlings mm -hmm. of, of Ghana. Ghana. He was a military person and he became a very good leader. We have had uh, Thomas Sankara. Sankara. He was and we celebrate him till date uh, but I also think that everything is defined the military has a role to play they are there to protect the territorial boundaries to protect uh, the citizens 
to maintain peace, to maintain law and order. And the moment that the, the, the military, they are suffering from a certain crisis, if they should side with the civilians to take over power, then there should be no distant time for that power to be uh, to be a transition. Mm. There should be no time because you know power is so sweet. We 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 we, we should we should accept that. You know when you are given a little command, there is a way that you you exercise that command. But like I said, absolute power it corrupts mm -hmm. absolutely. So we believe that military rule. When you are installing, especially in uh, French-speaking countries, the resisting that uh, they give you orders, prenez uh, le commandement, where they believe that you are the commander mm -hmm. in chief, and a military person is is taught to defend. He is not taught administration. They are taught defense. They are taught how to use the gun. Mm -hmm. They are taught defense tactics. They are taught. A lot of things that has to do with security. Security. That is your expertise. They are taught little or nothing about administration. They are taught little or nothing about economics. They are taught little or nothing about economic growth, economic development. And if you become a leader, and of course you have a vision, I do not have a problem with a military leader. But I think that majority of military leadership in Africa, they have been dangerous. They have been very, very disheartening because first the military leader focuses his leadership through the military mm -hmm. like okay we have a brother military people that we have a brother who is now a leader and that guy has to make sure that he keeps you guys happy in order to maintain him it's not different from majority of african leadership where the leaders put people who are loyal to them and not loyal to the people that will happen that, for instance, how come that um, when Idris Deby was the president and the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, it is a son who is immediately answerable to. He mm -hmm. is a son who is a chief guard or chief security or whatever of the presidency. Mm -hmm. It's because that confidence is not there. And as the son is there, the father knows that in the absence of him, the son will... Take over. take over and he is trying to build those who are loyal to him and not those who are loyal to, to the, the people mm -hmm. or to the state and there is one thing that african leaders in general should take into common sense that we made the land and we shall leave the land mm -hmm. we are leading the land but the land is above us so if we are leading a people we should be more concern in identifying the economic problems of the people, the social difficulties of the people, and trying to see how we will do things to ameliorate these things. And that is why we have experts who are trained. We have experts who carry out research. And even in a country, we have experts, economists, who give economic advice. If Chad, which we know, it's a very poor country. Mm -hmm. Not poor because it's supposed to be poor. Because Chad is at the center and should be a leeway to most countries and should have used the advantage of its location to, to, to boost uh, economic growth and economic activities. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they have been from one crisis to the, other. to the other. And the reason is this. It is greed. The fact that most leaders are greedy. Now, if Idno, Idris Debi Idno, you know that name was added to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a tribal name. Is the leader for 30 years and there is still crisis. The question is, um, I celebrate the fact that he died in the war front yeah. trying to fight against the insurgency. But 30 years and there is crisis. What is the priority first? We believe that where there is peace, development, development can follow. Yeah. What stops 
the Chadians and its leadership to maintain peace among the rebel and amongst its opposition. Because one thing I believe in, I do not believe that opposition of the country uh, kills the development. Mm -hmm. One thing I believe is that the opposition of every country facilitates development. Because <laughs> if you are a leader um, and the opposition gives you a better plan, and you feel like the opposition has a better plan, you can outsmart them. After all, you are in leadership, and they have a good plan, plan that many people are buying into the plan. Why not take over the plan and then execute? But we have African leaders who believe that opposition, anything that comes from the opposition, is bad. Is bad. Whether it is positive or not, as far as it was uh, voiced by the opposition, it will not be taken. And that is where Africans have a problem we have removed the people at the center of it and we have put ourselves we have removed the people at the center of it and we have put the presidents we have removed the people at the center of it and we have put the military commanders and because of this there is no vision there is no plan of action there is no mission statement there is no road map let's take for instance in 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 in, in cameroon where there is a vision of emerging in 2035. Mm -hmm. Question, what is the roadmap of the emergence? <clears throat> this vision is already like 10 to 15 years old. Yeah. What is the roadmap? Oh. What have we said that yeah. from, from first year to the fifth year, are we in, improving on the road infrastructure? Then we start that from the first year to the fifth year, we're going to do roads. We'll make sure that every region in Cameroon has he wrote mm -hmm. and then from five to the tenth year of the plan we will make sure that cameroon uh, cameroon goes into industry mm -hmm. we start building industries for ourselves uh, from this year to this year we reduce importation and and do everything so that we boost our home industry there is no plan we only have a vision and in that vision despite the fact that some some school of thought especially of the CPDM, they will tell you that there's a roadmap, it has been cut down to five agendas and everything. The question is, who evaluates them? Who tells you what we have achieved? Mm -hmm. Because with 2035 vision, you realize that in 2035, Cameroon will get up and realize that we are around 1990. That 1990 was even better. <laughs> because there is no plan of action. People are there consolidating. The country is more balkanized. And with the Chadians, we are asking, with a crisis you are having, with the fact that the country has always been, because Chadian, Chad is classified as a very poor country. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the citizens, they, they, they live from hand to mouth. And if leaders who come to power do not have the people at heart, do not have a vision, a plan of action to remove the people from poverty, from penury, from stress, from anger, from pent up anger that have been accumulating, to safety, mm -hmm. to food security, to, to, to enough and, and to good leadership, then you realize that the people will keep being angered. And the more they are angered, the, the, it's normal that a hungry man is an, an angry man. man. And the more they get hungry and angry with the military, the military man who has power has an angry bullet. You realize that we will keep losing lives every day, every other day. But the unfortunate thing, <coughs> sorry, the sad thing is that those who send the bullets to the street are always moving in bulletproof cars. They are always sitting in bulletproof offices and secured offices. And it is the innocent one who are dying in the street. That is a sad situation. Unfortunately, it's a trademark. For African leadership. Okay, so uh, uh, gradually getting to the end of the program, let's hear from you, Mr. Song. Now, having looked at the various ways that the different presidents act towards the problems or the situations of their countries, how can you say uh, the African Union, which is the governing body of the continent, is contributing in resolving these various problems? We saw uh, the it had sent. Uh, uh, Felix Chisekedi to go and facilitate this crisis in Chad. But what more? Um, sad enough, I'm not a believer of African Union. The African Union to me is in Gumba House. 
uh, where um, African leaders go and seek to share the goodies that they have sapped up from their citizens. And the uh, African Union do not have the, 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 the African people at heart. If they did, then they would have sanctioned these people. If African Union had the people at heart, during constitutional rape, they would sanction the leaders raping the constitution. If African Union had the people at heart, during coup d'etats, they will have to take measures that will involve the remaining African countries to stand against that particular country. But unfortunately, African Union, which I believe is a paper tiger, toothless bulldog, or whatever adjective negative to describe it, they don't have a use. But now, uh, if you say the African Union has not been taking the right actions to sanction, for example, we know very well that most of these countries that carried out coup d'etats were also given sanctions by the African Union, like economic sanctions and uh, especially economic sanctions and freezing of assets. But we got to realize that most of the sanctions were affecting more the people than the, 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 the officials of the countries. And you saw that Burkina Faso, Mali, you saw mm -hmm. that it didn't mm -hmm. help anything. I'm saying that every leadership needs to be proactive. Mm -hmm. By proactive, I mean we need to act. We need to see the future and act before time. But the African Union leadership is reactive. Mm -hmm. They react after something has happened. There is no preventive measures to make it not to happen. You get it? And the crises that are happening in, 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 in Africa, from the Southern Cameroon crisis to the Nigerian Biafran war to the South Sudan, uh, Sudan crisis to Ethiopian to whatever, I think African Union, as a union that have the people at heart, should have had enough mechanisms to put in place to be preventive rather than reactive. So when I say that, uh, I am not questioning a personality. I'm okay. not questioning a personality. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good. African Union is a flower bed. It's a window decoration. And like I said, the meeting that African Union leadership has it's only to ask, for instance, they'll go and ask the president of Nigeria, how much quantity of milk have you milked out from your people? So what is our own share? Where is your tithe? You pay your tithe to, to African Union. They ask uh, Chad, they ask the other countries. And, but I think if we need an African Union that fights for the unity of Africa. We need a, an African Union that goes above boundaries. We need an African Union that wants to put Africa at the center of it. We need an African Union that wants to make Africa a united Africa and a force and a contender. Mm -hmm. Because every other part of the world, you hear of the European Union. The European Union is a group of persons who have decided to come together in order to use their weaknesses and hide it under the strength of another country. Okay. Whereas Africans, the African Union is looking for the weaknesses of African countries to expose to the other one. Mm -hmm. Mind you that the African Union building where they are was not built by Africans. It was built by sponsorship from the West. So it's a decoration. I'm not being unpatriotic to Africans. <clears throat> I'm just saying what I think. As a youth, mm -hmm. I might be myopic in my thinking, but I think the African Union is not doing the best, is not doing enough in order to bring Africa out of the shame. We still have problems with traveling with passport from here to Equatorial Guinea, to Nigeria. But in the European Union, one passport, you can go across everywhere. But in Africa, you need a passport in Nigeria, you will need a passport in Chad, Equatorial Guinea, and it's making us to, to, to be more divided. Whereas if Africa... And, and it slows <clears throat> down uh, uh, development. development. If Africa was... To, it's more expensive to travel maybe within, within Africa African than out continent. of Africa. Yeah, it is. And that's because the leadership has no vision to plan. If they had that plan, we realize that you will live here and go to Nigeria freely, do business freely. But we know they are already looking They are already looking into that after they bring it into, uh, into force of the African continental free trade area and also 
the proposed eco currency for the African continent. We, we, we have heard that, and I think that if it's something that is on the pipeline, <laughs> because uh, Africa, like my fatherland mm -hmm. that has unfathered me, is, is, is a land of promise. They promise a lot of things. And if it is, we have heard of, I know of someone who works with uh, the African tr uh, free, free Trade. Okay. Uh, I used to talk with him, he talked about the plan of action. But it should not end on a piece of paper. Okay. Because when actions speak, it does not need explanation. Mm -hmm. We should see it working, we should see it actionable. Sure. Not that we should uh, just sit down and people tell you how good they are planning and then... You know, and we don't see anything. We don't see anything. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Song Derek, a civil society actor and political analyst. Thanks for honoring the invitation today on this platform. Uh, Rita, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the confidence you bestow on me to invite me to this privileged program that is watched all over Africa. And to the million viewers of African Media, it's always a pleasure to, to, to share what we know. And of course, we might be limited in what we know, but I think uh, when we are on platform, we say the truth. We say what we believe as is the truth without blinking. We mm -hmm. say what we know. And uh, if the, you have an opportunity to get to us to tell us what was said that was wrong, yeah. we, we welcome that. And a very special greetings to my, my friend and brother, Dilma Emanuel, who is an outspoken person of the civil society. Yeah. And to Dr. Ndimancho, um, who is the coordinator, coordinator of, of the NEA New Era Youth for Africa, where we believe that Africa must turn up, where we believe that we have been for so long without doing anything, where we believe that we have realized that doing nothing is a very difficult task to do. So let's start doing something in order to bring our leaders to tax, in order to ask them question, what are they doing with our resources? We must all ask that question. It starts from me, it starts from you. You have a role to play. And if everybody sweeps his or her house clean, the whole town, the whole Africa, the whole continent will be clean. Will be clean Thank you very much. Thank Rita. you very much. Doing nothing is a very difficult task. Yeah, like just just like the say, an idle man is a devil's workshop. Thank you very much, televiewers. We've come to the end of today's edition of Views on the Continent on your Pan African Television. Tomorrow is another edition of uh, your one hour English program. However, programs keep unfolding on the TV. Keep trusting your Pan African Television, and uh, more programs are right ahead. Bye bye. <laughs>